Welcome back, everyone. Our next speaker is Chloe Mesdagi, and she is not a new uh, comer to the to the Red Team Village. She has supported the Red Team Village for quite some time. I'm looking forward to her presentation, and the title of her presentation is The Big Threat to Security Teams. So without any further ado, I pass it back to Chloe. Hi, everyone. My name is Chloe Mesdagi, and I'm so thrilled to be here today with you guys. So I'm going to share my slides. So bear with me one second. In the meantime, I hope you guys are doing well and everyone is staying safe at this time. I'm, I'm just so looking forward to things getting better and it seems like there's hope on the horizon, which makes this talk even easier in many ways because today we're gonna to talk about burnout and I'm thrilled to do this with you too today. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my video because I wanna focus on the slides which is the real reason why we're all here today, right? Anyway, welcome to Burnout, the greatest threat to your organization's security. A little bit about myself. Once again, my name is Chloe Mistagi, and I am the co-founder of WOSEC and Hacking is Not a Crime. I'm also the founder of We Are Hackers, and I am a growth strategy consultant. Basically, what I do is that I grow out startups making sure that their branding and their positioning is well but also organization is like it, it's not necessarily flawless but i try to make it as flawless as possible so then it reduces any burnout in the organization itself but also to be to have better transparency and leadership so then everyone's on the same page to move forward together and having a good environment where people feel included if you want to know anything about me, feel free to go to standoutintech.com. So this may look familiar to you. So this was back at RSA conference last year, and we were full of hope of the new year. We hugged, we shook hands, we attended events full of people, and we had drinks, we had food together. We even leaned in to hear each other at a busy event and maybe shouted a little bit to hear the other person. Um, but we basically were enjoying life some of us went to karaoke some of us just you know we didn't we knew that there's a possibility that things could get worse for the pandemic but we weren't sure how fast it was going to happen if it was going to happen like what was going to end up happening but we all had this faith and belief that you know we'd be pretty much safe hopefully but it was a glorious time that day because two weeks later, within more like within those two weeks, we start hearing about our friends and colleagues basically starting to have some strange symptoms. I myself, I know that I ended up getting sick on the 12th day afterwards. I quarantined after the event just to be on the safe side. And I remember I got so sick and I couldn't believe what was going on and it took a while to get back to normal um but it is one of those moments where you know just two weeks before then i was enjoying seeing everyone we were out having fun um and laughing networking and then you know two weeks later i'm looking at my will and trying to figure out if anyone how this happened and also like what are the protocols because and nothing was set up at that time here. And so it was really hard in that moment. And it was so emotionally overwhelming, but it was just the very beginning of 2020 because it ended up being like this. And, and like by the end of 2020, we we're just like, please just, you know, we, we've had enough, we've taken as much as we can. It's like a layer after a layer to another layer. But in the end, what happened was like in 2021, we we're hoping things to get better. And it seems like things are getting better, hopefully, and let's hope that that keeps continuing. But we're still in this weird situation of we're still in a pandemic, one foot in the door, one foot out the door. But let's be real. We are right now walking on a fine line of being just barely okay and terrible. And all of us have been dealing with burnout. Well, not all of us. I'm looking at you, New Zealand, you lucky country. 
But even in New Zealand and ever before 2020 and security, we've known about burnout and have been through it before all the chaos fell in 2020. With burnout, we're placing ourselves and organization at a security risk. We will most likely click a link because we're not 100% who we are. And you're wondering, Chloe, what do you mean by that? Well, think about this. When you wake up first thing in the morning and you're checking your emails, but you hadn't had your coffee, but you feel exhausted, like you didn't sleep and you just feel like you're a kind of walking zombie at that moment, you'll get a message from your manager and it has your manager's name on it and everything. So you click on the link, but you didn't look at the details of that email address. It wasn't from your boss. The reality is, is that we're most likely to click on a link because we're not 100% present. When we're burnt out, we're running on the very low battery. So we are not using all of our capacity. So we don't have the moment to like dive into, should I click on it, should I not? Do I need to look at the details? Because we usually can get like that when we're a little bit more awake and less exhausted. And this also can happen when we try to patch things. Sometimes we don't patch it right, or we're overwhelmed by what is needed to be patched, what to prioritize. But let's be also real here that sometimes we've seen like as if we're not humans to others, that we're kind of seen like these robots. And humans cannot handle this 24 seven work because when we're working all hours and always expect to be on calls, how do we even try to balance a personal life and a work life? because burnout occurs when we do not practice self-care. And when our work demands more from us, we spend less time on personal life. The balancing is gone, stress increases, we feel guilty, we struggle to sleep because we feel like we're trying so hard not to drown. And you may even notice changes on your team, such as employees withdrawn or fast to become sad or angry or delays in email response or projects. And this can all be seen when remote too. And right now, working from home and remotely has increased the number of hours work increase expectations as well and has really increased the blurriness of work time and limits and some people have basically they quit because they cannot handle this juggling of work and personal life and because their company failed them with being more flexible and having better practices of inclusion and equity we saw a good number of women leaving the field and that's because the flexibility is not in existence quite there yet in our industry. We still have a relatively new industry. So it hasn't really worked out how to practice inclusion and equity because it's such a brand new industry that hasn't even talks about it, but don't do anything about it. But I want to even be more blunt here, which is that in InfoSec, we haven't had a nine to five job for years or even if we ever had one. And this is the contributing factor because employers push employees to work from nine to five and yet send emails, text messages, Slack messages before and after hours. And this places you and your team at a losing situation because they feel obligated to respond. And this is why the burnout cycle continues. For those who are not aware of what burnout starts to form and look like, it can be that it used to take a few minutes to respond to an email. Now it takes an hour or so. You feel exhausted and trapped. You may even feel empty. You push yourself to a breaking point where you're no longer coming up with ideas, but rather taking meds to help with aches. You feel overly anxious over events and deadlines, and you can easily cry or get angry faster than usual. You may not respond to friends and family when they call or text for some time, and then that guilt starts entering. Your personal life is slipping. Your life is now your work, and you start to feel unappreciated for the work at your work and then become resentful at your work, and then end up hating and dreading your job. And this is the moment you may lose your team members because what we have been doing is putting our employees at a huge health risk. And no matter how much sleep you get, you just feel so exhausted, emotionally depleted, which can mimic depression. You may even struggle to sleep such as trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. And when we're stressed out, cortisol increases and it gets hard to shut down our minds, which causes us to toss and turn and reduce sleep or even get enough REM. And when we don't get proper sleep, stress levels increase and mental state can start shifting to anxiety and depression symptoms. 
when we're overly anxious or experiencing depression symptoms, we start to get sick way more often, such as gastrointestinal issues, headaches, infections, colds, flus, cold sores, rashes, or irritated skin, even lower immune system. And when our immune system is so low and stress is so high, your joints and muscles get stiff because your body is on a survival mode, thinking that there's like some sort of perceived threat out there. And it can even turn to muscle weakness and fatigue. If left untreated, prolonged stress increases high blood pressure, heart attacks, and strokes because there's too much adrenaline and cortisol over an extended period. Clearly, burnout is not a joke at all. It's extremely serious. And we have a real problem in our industry that's leading our colleagues and ourselves into this situation. And I want to point out that just recently, The Who came out with a study showcasing those that work extra long hours they're more likely to deal with severe chronic health issues such as stroke and heart attack. And this is part of that burnout conversation that when we're working over the hours expected of us, it's too much on our body because the reality is that when our mental health is off, our physical health is off. When our physical health is off, our mental health is off because they work together. And us ignoring mental health for the longest time in this industry is why we're in this place in the first place. So let's talk about this. Let's look at the results of our industry by working in security, the high demand of 24 seven around the clock. So here are some facts about CISOs and this came out in dark reading on 2020, but I want to state that these statistics are more like 2019 and that these numbers are probably significantly higher um, because 2020 and 2021. But 21% of CISOs said that they've taken a leave of absence because of a job related stress, and 41% of CISOs took the significant step, even though many report being afraid to take sick days, and 35% neglected to take all their allotted time off. 48% of CISOs said that their work stress has impacted their mental health, while 35% said it impacted their physical health. 40% of CISOs said that their work stress has impacted their relationships with their families or children, and 32% it has impacted their relationships with spouses or romantic partners, and 32% said that it has impacted their relationship with friends. 23% said that they've been using medication or alcohol to manage the stress. And 94% of American CISOs and 95% of UK CISOs reported working more than their contracted hours, on average 10 hours per week more. In addition, 83% of American C-suite execs and 73% of UK execs confirmed they do indeed expect security teams to work longer hours. And they're not paid for those longer hours either. In other words, we are expected to work beyond normal work hours. The CISO is the manager, the leader. Having someone who is burned out that leads can become so dangerous to employers, but also to employees. It also creates security risk, increasing the possibilities of managerial issues. Coping with such issues can lead them to self-medicating on the job and walking a very thin line of what is appropriate. But once again, this is not a CISO's fault. It is a system that is broken, an industry that isn't sufficient in the long run. It is this industry that continues to fail us and runs on people being burned out. Take a moment here. We have a foundation that doesn't empower us. We have a foundation that disempowers us in every single way. There is no wonder we have a rotating door and mental health crisis in our industry. And I'm about to show you why it's like this. So why are we burned out? By being in security, we're monitoring and operating 24 seven. Sometimes we work throughout the middle of the night. Sometimes we cannot sleep well because we are always at the edge of our seat when it comes to security, because we know attackers work all hours. And we're always worried when a breach will occur because we all know that there was a breach. It would be an ad hoc style to fix it. Don't believe me? According to the Poneman Institute, while security response planning is slowly improving, the vast majority of organizations surveyed, 74%, are still reporting that their plans are either ad hoc, applied inconsistently, or that they have no plans at all. Additionally, more than half, 52% of those with security response plans, said that they have never reviewed or had 
a set time period for reviewing or testing those plans. Now with COVID-19 and working from home, how many of these plans have been updated? Yeah, this is one of the reasons why there was a 400% increase of successful breaches. So instead of doing better planning and having less disruption, we tend to do this one thing, which is we throw tools at the problem because it's so much easier to throw a tool at something versus trying to understand the human element role that plays here. And spoiler alert, we're actually making the situation way worse by doing so. Because when we add tools to it, guess what? It's not on the plan and coordination is off. And these third-party pools, we have no idea how secure they really are. Are you feeling stressed out yet? Perhaps cortisol levels rising? No? Well, then I want you to imagine the situation. Imagine you're part of a crew and you just found out that your ship is sinking. But you found out after for some time because you were not alerted by your system, your customers are aboard, basically trusting for their safety, by the way. And your team is scared and some are paralyzed by the fear of failing, but they're trying their best. But there's a catch here. Your entire team hasn't slept well and has seasickness. So they're not exactly 100% state of mind. If anything, you could actually say they kind of function in the same rate and scope as someone who's burned out. Okay, so now you have the backstory. Now imagine your captain pulls out the safety binder to know what is the protocol. Unfortunately, that binder that was updated is not on that ship and you're using an old procedure, but have very new features to the ship. Are you stressed out now? Because this is what it's like when dealing with bad plans and when the human element is taken out, it leaves you with a wreckage. The truth is bad actors are everywhere and attack at all hours. Zero days drop often and we constantly need to be up to date of what bad actors use. That takes time and energy and this is why we're struggling. We're part of the crew and when we don't function well or communicate well, it becomes a really scary situation. The reason we're in security is because we know how incredibly important it is, but we also need to come to terms that we work around the clock and don't practice self-care or even promote employee wellness. What's the point here? Because then we can be a danger to the organization as well if we're running on low battery and feeling not well. This is why burnout matters. This is why if we keep turning to tools and not finding time to plan, prep, practice, and self-care, we become that security team that sinks. We won't be able to fix a breach fast, and it's really scary. And please, Whatever you do, don't turn around now and blame your employees if they're not performing well, because for the majority of you, that is what happens. You let the team ever go without checking to see what have you done that has reduced their performance, because chances are they're burned out and feeling very much alone. With COVID-19, we're taking care of family members on camera daily, unable to leave our homes, can't see our friends and family. Some of us live alone. Some of us put off important life events. We've lost people closest. Our colleagues are struggling. We're worried about keeping a job. We're worried about foreign life we have. We're worried we can't find a job. We're worried we have COVID. We're worried we may not make it through COVID. We're not a machine. We're a human and the human element created security and runs on security. And we're all struggling with staying okay before COVID and during COVID, except New Zealand. So how can we lead like the prime minister of New Zealand? Think about it. She worked with people and plan, and when you plan, there's less disruption. Investment number one, listen, take action together. Be strong, be kind, ask your team what they need. Don't just listen, take actions. When we listen to each other and strategize together on how to improve the team and or department, it reduces the stress because stress happens when we're not being listened to or feel uncomfortable to speak up. Your colleagues may share that certain tools aren't needed, or there's a tool that does five things all in one that is better. They may share that what is missing on the team and perhaps less meetings are needed. By working together on what are the issues, we can collaborate together on how to reduce the issues or completely resolve them. Investment number two, plan together, strategize together. With collaboration and listening, working together with a team to make strategies and revisit your security response plans. Make it up to date. Revisit the plan every time a new tool is removed or added, a team member change or environment change, and so on. 
By creating and making solid plans, it helps speed up the recovery and reduces the stress of when a breach occurs, that there's a plan to follow that's up to date. You owe it to yourselves, your colleagues, your org, your customers. I mean, look at what New Zealand did. They planned and they listened. They were looking at 25 deaths over 563,000 deaths in the US because someone didn't want to plan or take actions or listen to the scientific team. That's the number three, encourage self-care. Studies have shown that when dealing with burnout, taking one week off away from work or anything related to work provides recovery for burnout. If your employees burn out, make sure they feel supported to take time off and also encourage it often to the team. Majority of employees in security are afraid to take time off because they feel guilty for not being there to help their team and are giving more work to their colleagues or coming back to a dumpster fire. If you can, give everyone one day off a month for a mental health break. And lastly, make sure you have one day per week dedicated to having no meetings. This allows your colleagues to catch up on any items or projects. Investment number four, be kind and respect boundaries. Please be kind to one another because from what we have learned, when we work together and understand how we impact others, we start practicing empathy. And empathy is certainly missing at times in our industry. But by listening and being there for one another, it reminds us that there's people who care for each other because we cannot assume how someone is doing by how they look or their performance. We do not know what each other is going through. So instead of going at someone, reframe and think before you speak or act because you really don't know how that will impact the other person. So as New Zealand shares, be kind because that's the element we need to stick together to protect the world from the darkness, but also know that being kind is respecting work boundaries, such as six feet of distance and a mask. So what can you do right now? I want you to take a screenshot of this and keep it for yourself or share it. And the reason for that is that this is what you can do and it takes less than 15 minutes to do all these things. The first thing first you should do is set weekly one-on-ones for 15 minutes with each employee. You don't need to use that, that whole 15 minute part, but it's a good day to, I mean, once a week, it's a good meeting to have where you go through with your manager, what to prioritize, what are the things that you're gonna get done, what are the deadlines and work with your manager. And for your manager to be on the same page with you, this helps with reducing miscommunication, but also it is that in place so you don't feel like you're being micromanaged. And if your manager setting up this one-on-one, -on -one, please note that after this type of meeting, you shouldn't micromanage at all. Just you have to start trusting your employees. I know that for some people, they have this belief that I only trust that you're working if I see you in the office. That is no longer the truth. That has not been the truth ever. Because the reality is that we're working just perfectly fine from home. It's just some of us do miss going into the office. So set the one-on-ones to reduce the micromanaging, but also it shows that there's trust present and it allows for you to build a relationship with your colleague. Next step, which is make Monday or Friday a no meetings day. Once a week, you should have no meetings for anyone on the team. This allows for them to do all the things they need to do if they're behind schedule to focus on those things. Monday and Friday is good because if you ever have a holiday, it's usually on a Monday or Friday, so it doesn't interrupt the work week in a sense. Set up a meeting with the team to explore ways to improve together is the third thing you can do. And what this looks like is setting up a meeting, you know, maybe a week out from now or, you know, in two weeks from now. And in there, have it for one hour and ask for your team to join it and make it something really important, which basically you sit around a round table and collaborate on how to do better on strategy and planning on the security team find out what tools are good, which ones aren't. Also, what are things that you can do as a manager that will help your team out? I think the one thing that we can all take away is always asking for suggestions, you know, and which is like, how can I be a better leader or how can I be a better employee? And I think that's something that we should ask around always. It's always good for us to try to improve on ourselves too, because it's, 
you know, it's a, it's a two way street here. You have to work on yourselves too. It can't just be on one other person. Lastly, create an anonymous survey. You can create an anonymous survey for people to submit how they are feeling, how if they feel like they're if the work environment is healthy or not. But you have to make sure it's anonymous um, because there are going to be people that are not going to participate because they're afraid that it isn't anonymous. So that's one thing to keep in mind is that not everyone's going to speak up. But if you do notice that there's certain people that never do speak up, it might be because they don't feel included or they feel awkward to talk about these things because they don't feel respected in the environment or they're unsure about the environment or they're nervous about talking about those things. So please do keep that in mind. And lastly, remember when we work together and listen to each other, magic does happen. When we work together and making sure people get personal time off without them fearing of taking time away, we are then becoming collaborative. When we collaborate, we reduce the stressful items that hold back the team from thriving. When we focus on balancing work and personal life for everyone, that's when we no longer have that dumpster fire and burnout as a security concern no more because we know we're human and the human elements rule the world that we live in. And whenever in doubt, just remember, if New Zealand can plan well, so can you. Because in all of us, there's a Frodo within us who's on a journey to get rid of a malicious threat. Overview, quickly, burnout places you and your team at a huge risk. Collaborate to form strategies to improve the team. Start making plans and revisit security response plans. Promote self-care by being kind and respectful to boundaries. And once you do all of that, that's how we start reducing burnout in our organization. And I just wanna say thank you so much for having me. It is such an honor to be here with you today. And honestly, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out. I'm always on, well, I'm not always online, but my DMs are always open on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and LinkedIn. That is my handle right there. And thank you all for existing. And once again, thank you for having me. Until then, I hope to see everyone very soon in person once it's safe. Until then, please stay safe. And thank you again. Bye-bye.